Hello, my name is Bobby Schultz. I'm an undergraduate at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities studying electrical engineering and computer science. Now, previously we've talked about H-bridges and what they do and how they do it. Um, so now let's talk about some practical applications of them. And if you, as I do, find building an H-bridge out of discrete transistors a little on the tedious side, well, there's an answer. That's something like this. This is what's called an L293D uh, double H-bridge motor driver. Now, this actually has two full H-bridges in it. Um, now, of course, they don't technically make the L293D anymore. However, that's what it's commonly referred to. This, for instance, is a SN74410. It's made by Texas Instruments, and it's a very common chip. Um, that is a direct replacement for the L293D if you look on the data sheet. Now, what I'd like to talk about is how to use this, where to use this, um, what the pinouts of it are, and how to apply that, and particularly the basic implementation of it. So let's look at a data sheet, a diagram of this with the pinouts, and talk about what some of those pinouts are. All right, so a moment ago I was talking about that equivalent motor driver to the L293D, um, and now here's a pinout of that which I've pulled simply from the data sheet of it. If you simply Google the name of that driver, you'll find um, a pinout that looks like this. Now, this can be very intimidating at first, and I want to just go through and take a minute to explain what all of these are. Um, now, as I said before, this is actually a dual H-bridge, meaning that there's actually two full H-bridges in here, two sets of H-bridge inputs and outputs. Now you'll see over here one and two are going to form an output, and three and four over here are going to form another output. Now for this most basic operation, we're just gonna be talking about driving one motor with it. But remember, these setups will then directly apply to if you wanna run two motors. You'll just have to set up these in the same fashion. So just to make things a little less confusing, I'm just going to uh, cover those up for now. So this is what we have to worry about. These are the things that we care about. And now down here, I'm gonna be drawing what you're gonna be hooking those up to. So firstly, the first thing that might be rather confusing, I know it was for me the first time I dealt with one of these, was the whole fact that there's two power supplies to the chip. Now, the reason for that is you actually have these two power supplies for different reasons. You have VCC1, which is actually a logic level power supply. That's for all of the transistors and that kind of thing inside the chip, your digital logic. Whereas over here, VCC2, that is actually for driving the motor. That's the power that's going to go to the motor. So VCC1, that wants to be a regulated plus five volts. Um, whereas VCC2, that can be an unregulated voltage, say from a battery or something like that, what have you. Um, and that can actually be uh, 4.5 volts um, to 36 volts, actually. Um, of course, you'll need to be aware of the power restriction on this chip. Now, this chip is a uh, one amp motor driver, um, and that is distributed across those two channels. So in reality, it's 0.5 amps continuously per channel. Um, now, of course, you could run just one channel at one amp, that's fine as well. Um, just important to keep those numbers in mind. Um, and of course, one thing to remember is that both of these supplies will need to have a common ground. Now, since we're talking about common ground, let's talk about these grounding plates here. Now, you'll notice it says heat sink and ground. Now, this chip can generate a fair bit of heat, but it doesn't have any kind of fin or metal you know, plate that we can sink that heat with. So they actually sink the heat through the pins themselves, which is why you have four pins for this. That's mainly for heat sinking. Um, so 13 and 12 over here are gonna be connected to that same thing. And four and five over here are gonna be connected to that same thing. Now, you're simply going to connect those to ground, um, like so. Uh, and say you have you know, a breadboard or something like that, that's now going to allow this heat to spread out over all those pins in your breadboard as well, which is going to heat, help keep this chip um, cool. And internally, these are connected. This set of four are all internally connected. So theoretically, you could just plug one pin in to ground, and that would be fine. Um, but in an ideal world, you're going to want to connect all four of them just to allow for heat dissipation and things like that. Now, next up here, we're going to have our pin one, which you'll see is enable one, two. And of course, over here, there's going to be an enable three, four, which I've covered up, but they work in the same way. So the way enable works is that 
in order for anything to be driven on this chip, regardless of what your inputs for your H-bridge are, this pin has to be high if you want your motors to be driven. So this would be, for instance, a fail-safe command where it, you know, you're saying, we don't care what my inputs are to the H-bridge. If this pin goes low, stop whatever you're doing and shut the motors off. So something independent of, say, a microcontroller. Uh, but for a very simple case, we can simply tie this to plus 5 volts, our plus V logic level. Um, and then our, we'll simply use uh, our inputs to shut it off. So we can set both of our inputs either high or both of our inputs low, and that will stop our motor from running. Since we're talking about inputs, let's talk about what they are. So as you can see up here, we have 1A and we have 2A. These are going to be our two inputs. Um, so right here, we're going to have an input. Now that can either be from a switch or from a microcontroller, what have you. Um, and those are going to be lines that you're going to independently control, and that will tell the H-bridge which direction to drive the motors. Um, now next, we have these two corresponding, logically, outputs. Now these are going to be our outputs. These are going to go to our load, whatever that is. Now that could be a relay, that could be something like that. In our case, though, it's most likely going to be a motor. So this is actually where our motor is going to be connected. Um, and then, of course, which one of these is positive and which is negative will change based on how we're running the motor, what our inputs uh, on pins 2 and 7 are going to say. And that will determine which direction our motor is being driven. Um, now, of course, the other set of pins here will be set up in exactly the same way. You're going to have another set of corresponding inputs. You're going to have another set of corresponding outputs. And you'll have another enable pin. Um, but these ideas correspond directly to those. Now, this is an incredibly useful chip. It can be used to drive motors like this or relays, like I said before. And given that you have four pins, you can even drive a stepper motor with this if you set it up correctly. Um, so I hope that this has been helpful to sort of go over the basics of how to use an L293D motor driver. Um, it's a very useful thing, and I hope that you get a lot of use out of it.